Today we're going to be showing the fastest and most efficient way to level in Starfield. You can do this right at the beginning of the game once you're able to free roam, and this will allow you to level up so incredibly fast to be able to start fleshing out the character the way that you want. I found myself at the beginning of the game just really wanting to try out other skills, but leveling was starting to get really slow, even though there's a couple really great ways to level in the game and make money at the same time. This is by far the fastest way possible. Now to do this, we need to utilize outposts, and I made a previous video on outposts and how important they are, but right now we're in Aquila City because I want to pick up some materials. Aquila is going to be one of the first areas that you go to in the game, but if you've never been here, it's in the Cheyenne system near the Alpha Centauri system. And then inside of here, there's a planet called Aquila. You're going to want to go here and land on Aquila City. Once here, you're going to want to head down into the center of the town. You're going to see the rock, and on the left-hand side is going to be Midtown Minerals. This is where we're going to be able to get pretty much everything we need, and there's another store in here where we can get some more stuff as well. Now, if you want a more in-depth guide into the outpost system else. and building up your first base. You can check that out. We're going to go over it pretty quick in this video as well. So let's pick up some stuff here. We're going to go for aluminum, all the aluminum that they have. We're going to pick up the beryllium, copper, all of the iron that they have, nickel, tungsten, and that should be everything we need right now. Now, if you want to stock up on a lot of this, if you want to really There's get a head start, you can. All you have to do is just wait 48 universal time hours. So if it's here, it's about 24 or whatever it is. Basically, you just need to refresh the shops. But there is another shop down here that's also going to sell minerals as well as another thing that we need. So go to the general store. And inside of here, we're going to go to resources once again. And we're going to pick up all the adaptive frames that they have. You can also pick up more aluminum or aluminium, beryllium, and pretty much just all the other things that we just got. You're going to want to pick up some lubricant too if they have it. You can also pick up zero wire. That's going to come in handy as well. Now, if you need to refresh all of the shops to be able to stock up on a bunch of this before you head out, just head to any seat. Just sit there and wait 24 hours. You can also pick up all of these minerals at the mineral store inside of Jemison. Here on Jemison, you only have to wait 24 hours because that's equivalent to even more universal time, which is what's used to refresh the shops. If you do it on Aquila City, you'll have to end up waiting 48 hours which is a lot longer, so you can actually pick up far more resources faster on Jemison than you can on Aquila. Once you've stocked up on enough resources, we're going to head to the Narian Star system. If you followed my tutorial video on outposts, you're going to be very familiar with this system by now, because this has a moon on it that has all of the materials that we're going to need for it. And I noticed in many of you had asked in the last video how to find your outpost. You'll actually be able to tell where they are, because on that star system, you'll have this like little outpost icon right here, and that's how you find your outposts. It'll also be highlighted on the planet where you put it, or moon. So we're going to be going to Enderafon here, and if we show our resources here, you can see that we have helium, aluminum, iron, and beryllium here, as well as europium, which is worth quite a bit. And what we've done, if you didn't watch the previous video, is we've kind of set one of our outposts here near iron and helium. We set up this full outpost. You can check out that video on exactly how we did it, but we'll go over it really quick here in this video as well. But now we're going to set up an iron mine here as well. So we're going to go ahead and land really close to here. All you need to do is just scan the planet to see where the resources are, go to the iron, and we're going to land. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because if you have outposts in the same system, you can actually link all of the resources together. So once you land, you're going to hit F to scan, and then you can hit R to build an outpost. And you can see that we have a bunch of iron in the area on the top left. You can actually use this to quickly figure out what is available in the area. Uh, this is probably a pretty decent place, but essentially you want to find a spot that has a lot of iron. And we're just going to click to confirm this down. And now we can go into the alternate view to see exactly how much iron is in the area. So we have an extractor for iron right now. We've got an iron deposit right there and another iron deposit over here and another one right there. So we've got three iron deposits. They're kind of far away from each other. We've got another one right here as well. So we've got four iron deposits. You can kind of see how quickly it is to be able to find them. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the iron, the tungsten, and the aluminum that we picked up to be able to put down a bunch of these iron extractors. So we're going to start off with the ones down here. We're just going to put them down. They can't overlap, so you need to just kind of space them out however you can to be able to get them to place down. There we go. And we're going to fit as many as we can in this little area. Now you'll also notice that we need 20 power to be able to power all of these. So we're going to be using our beryllium, aluminum, and copper to be able to make these solar arrays. So we're going to place one... And each of these solar rays is going to give us a bit of power. So now we've got 24 power just for those. And then we're also going to be needing storage. This is also going to cost us iron because we need solid storage. 
And this is basically what we're going to be doing is building a lot of this storage. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to place a bunch of these. Well, I guess we'll only place two because we don't have a ton of iron on us, but we're going to be farming up iron anyways. And what we can do is once we've got one or two of these down, we can go over to our iron extractor. You can create an outpost link on the computer. It's right clicking on it and you'll see this little draggy bit. You can do this on Xbox as well. I don't know what button it is. And you're just going to link it to your storage. And then what we're going to do is once we have storage, what we want to be able to do is we want to link the storage for overflow into other ones. So right now I only have one more, but we would do that. If I had another storage, then I would link this one to that, etc., etc. And basically you want to build overflow so that way your storage is always filling up all of the other containers as well. And now we got to do this for all of them. So if we create an outpost link, we're going to drag these all to this first output to this first one right here. And that's going to be the one that we link to all of our other storage devices. So that way we don't have to do anything too crazy. It'll be really easy. We'll explain more as we kind of go on. Now what we want to do is head over to the miscellaneous section and we can go to the cargo link. We're going to use iron, beryllium, aluminum and zero wire to be able to build this and this is going to allow us to link all of our stuff to and from different outposts in the same system this is the very basic beginning of our setup we're farming iron right here and you can see over time that these are filling up we've also got our cargo station right here our cargo link as well as all of our power. Now what we need to do is just stock up on a little bit of iron. And what's really cool about this is if we go into the build mode, we can go back into by hitting R and then we hit tab to go into build mode. We wanna put down just a, like a little chair or something like this. This is where things are gonna get pretty interesting. We're gonna move this kind of far away from our storage facility. Maybe we'll put it right there. Once you have the chair down, we're just going to sit in this real quick and we're going to wait. We'll just wait, um, I don't know, maybe we'll wait 10 hours. I like this particular moon because 10 local hours equates to 58 hours of universal time. And the way resource gathering works or anything else in the game is everything refreshes or mines or whatever it is on universal time. So we're getting a nice bonus for our weights here which is pretty awesome. Now I know I said it's a 10, but we're not, gonna, not even going to use all of that time because once we get up... We should be able to turn around and you're going to see that our storage facilities are full already. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because we need this iron because we're going to go back to our other outpost. And we're going to use this iron to actually build another one of these outpost connections. If you haven't followed my first video to set up this particular outpost, there is a link in the description. But essentially what we've done is we're on the same exact planet or moon rather. But instead of going to an iron location, we went to a spot where there is aluminum and or in helium really close there's also beryllium here as well which we're going to need and i looked for an area that has all three of these resources in one spot which really isn't that bad to find if we go into f we can kind of hit this uh build mode again and we can go into our alternate view and you can see here that we've set up pretty much the same kind of system we have aluminum going here into these storage crates then we have our beryllium miners also going into these storage crates and then we also have helium going into here, which is powering some of our generators and our habs and all things like that. It's essentially the same process that we just went over, just on a slightly larger scale with more types of resources. Now for your helium, you're going to need gas storage, but the beryllium and aluminum are still going to use our solid storage. We also have a transfer container. This allows you to transfer things to your ship, which makes life really easy. So you can put down one of those. But what we need to build here is another cargo link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this cargo link over here. And if you want, you can also build a landing pad. These landing pads are super duper helpful. Highly recommend building one of these when you can. I'm actually going to put it maybe right back here. This takes iron, beryllium, zero wire, and adaptive frames. Unfortunately, we don't have a tungsten farm here for your aluminum extractors. But you're not going to need a ton of them, but place down a bunch of your aluminum extractors because aluminum and iron are going to be the most important thing that we're going to be farming on this planet to be able to get our XP. It's not really an exploit. It's just taking advantage of the systems that are in the game that are meant to be there. We're going to be using aluminum and iron for this. Now, once you've got all of this built out and you've got your cargo link here, you can head up to the little console on the cargo link itself. And you can see now we have the Enderifin Outpost 3 and we want to set up a cargo link for this. And we're going to confirm. Now what you can do is once you have this built and you have the link set up, you can go to the green box here on this planet and we're going to create a link to our storage box just down here. Essentially what we want is we have all of our other resources at this plant. So we have aluminum, beryllium, and helium here. So we want to get our iron here. 
Essentially, what you want to do is you want to be able to bring resources from one area to the other area. So we're not going to actually send any resources to the other outposts that we have. We just want to get all of our iron to this area. So essentially what's going to happen is it's going to get dropped off in this green box, then it's going to get put into the storage. Now you're going to want to go back to your iron mine, and you're going to create an outpost link from the storage boxes over to the output of the cargo link. You'll notice that you cannot link this way to the green box. So to receive items, you go from green box to storage. To send items, you go from storage to red box. Now what's going to happen is as we are mining up all of these resources, they're going to get transferred there. A cargo ship's going to drop down and it's going to transfer it over to our other outpost and send it directly into the other storage. This process can repeat pretty much infinitely now. So now what we want to do is we want to sit on this chair because we want to build a lot of storage and a lot of other things. So we're going to sit in this chair and we're going to kind of let all of our stuff run because now we're harvesting everything we need. It's all getting transferred to the same location. So if we wait 24 hours, we're actually waiting 140 hours here. Now that we're getting all of these resources to one location, we want to build this up into a massive empire of resource gathering and crafting. So you're gonna to wanna to place an industrial workbench. Now, if for some reason you can't access this because it says it's obstructed, all you need to do is just make a new save game and then load that save game and it will fix that problem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make these industrial frames. These are gonna be used for making storage because we wanna make a lot of storage. So we can click and then we can confirm. And now you see that every time we do that, we get 99 XP. This is essentially what we're going to be doing to be making not only money, but a ton of XP. This is going to allow us to level up extremely quick. And you'll notice that we can kind of just kind of get in this process of clicking and then clicking and getting that XP. But now that we've made a bunch of these industrial frames, we can improve our storage and we can really get into the process that we're going to use to be able to level up quick. You can see we already got a level from doing that. You get a ton of XP this way. Now we've got our industrial frames, iron, and aluminum. We're going to start building out a massive storage facility. You can basically just click to build and just stack them really as high as you need to because you can go into the different build mode to be able to do that as well. And just click and then click. And what you need to do is once you are done doing this, the easiest way to link it, well, there's a couple different easy ways to link it, but you go into the build mode and what you can do is see where your last one is, create the link, bring it over and then create a link, bring it over, and etc. And just kind of go through this whole process. It's a little bit of a setup, but once you have it set up, my oh my, are you going to be leveling fast? And you're able to make a ton of money from this too if you build like a ship where you can actually carry all this stuff and sell it. Now, once you start making a big enough outpost, you are going to start getting raided as well. So you're going to want to set up security systems around too. So you're going to want to put down turrets and things like that and make sure they're all powered. I don't know the frequency at which you get raided, but it will start happening. So you're going to want to make sure to put up your defenses as you build this out as well. Now, one thing that's really important as you expand your storage, you're going to want to make sure that as you kind of grow out your storage, because right now what I'm doing is I'm expanding my iron storage. So that way I actually transfer all the materials that I need. But what's really important is that the thing that you link to your delivery box, make sure it's at the end of your storage line. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of linking it so I go this way and then I go this way and it fills up like that. So I want to make sure that the end of whatever storage facility I've built is where I actually link to our output right there. So that way we're not only transferring from one box, we're going to be transferring everything. So it kind of goes through a line where all of these resources are going through all of these boxes. And then the last box in your chain is the one that you want to link to your output and vice versa for the input. You want to make sure that your input goes to the beginning of the line rather than the end, because if you only put it to the end of the line, it's not going to fill up all of your other boxes and you're not going to be getting all of your storage. So last box in the line goes to output. Your input, wherever you want it delivered, whatever you receive from your output, that green box needs to go to the beginning of your line so that way it fills up everything in the chain. Now, once you've built up a large enough storage facility, and trust me, you're going to want to get a massive storage facility. I've only gotten this really small because I want to actually use larger storage boxes once I level up. I'm just going to do the same rest thing. So we can sit on this couch and we'll wait the max amount of time. Now, once you get up, you might notice that your local storage boxes will be full. You can see all the green behind us, but the ones over there, they might not be full yet. So let's go ahead and go outside. And we can see all of our aluminum from the local storage resource gatherers are all full. 
But our iron ones might have not changed. What needs to happen is we need to wait for this guy to either arrive or leave and then come back before all of these will fill up from that time skip. There is another option where you can build like a large transfer ship and be able to transfer all of this manually yourself. Now the benefit of doing this first is you need all of these resources anyways and while you're crafting through all of this your ships will be going back and forth bringing you all of your iron. So it's still a pretty fast process and essentially all you need to do is if you hit E to craft this you can kind of place your mouse or whatever it is on the controller. I haven't tried this with a controller, but we should be able to move and then we can kind of click right there and then we can hit E. And if you get into the fast process of this, you can hit E, you can click and then you hit E again. And you can see just how fast you can actually go through and craft all of these. You're gonna get a ton of XP this way. And this isn't even the most efficient way to be able to do this yet. You can see we've already got another level just from a few crafts of this. There's a few interesting things that we can do here. So if you head back to our actual solar system, Sol, for those of you that don't know, our sun is actually called Sol, you can head to Venus here and you can see there's nickel and cobalt on this planet. But there's also another interesting thing about Venus. So if you can find nickel and cobalt in the same spot here on Venus, you can build out the exact same system that we just did all in one location. Take the iron and the aluminum and the beryllium as well as the adaptive frames all to this planet and build out a massive resource facility, farm up nickel and cobalt. But what's great about Venus is it actually rotates very slowly. And it's interesting that they included it in this game as well, because if you time travel on this planet, time goes by a hundred times faster. So for every hour, there's a hundred hours passing in universal time. So you can farm up a ton of resources here. Now, if you do want to build on Venus specifically, you will need a planetary habitation skill to be able to do this. But there are plenty of other planets where you can get nickel and cobalt on them as well. This is one of the best planets to be able to time travel on because you're going to pass the most at universal time there. But essentially, you're going to want to look for any planet that has cobalt and nickel on it and you can build out your cobalt and nickel farms and then you would use all of those resources of that cobalt and nickel to make the magnets instead of the adaptive frames because then that way you don't have to wait for items to transfer back and forth etc etc and you'll be able to do it incredibly fast leveling up as far as i'm aware the fastest way possible in the game without using console commands or cheats or mods or things like that it's actually using mechanics within the game and this will definitely be the fastest way to level up on xbox but whether you just use adaptive frames or go to another planet with nickel and cobalt to make the magnets it's incredibly efficient and hopefully this all helped you out try not only building out your outposts but finding out ways to level extremely fast as well